How to scrape HTML data using Adobe Acrobat Excel and PDF 2 Excel. This is an online database and on it, it has data that we want. This one in particular belongs to the International Bobsleigh and Skeleton Federation. Let's ask it to give us some results of particular races, such as Bobsleigh men for the season of 2011 to 2012 and the World Cup. It's going to filter out a whole bunch of data from that time frame, that discipline type, and the tracks. And as you can see, it gave us a bunch of pages. World Championships usually consist of about eight races apiece. Let's start with the first one. This one took place in Calgary, February 12, 2012, four-man bobsleigh. And now the site has given us the results of that particular race divided by rankings, nationalities, and the four athletes in the four-man bobsleigh event. The first thing I recommend doing is saving the HTML page at this point as a PDF file. There's a variety of ways you can do this. You can use an online site that does it for free or Adobe Acrobat. And save your PDF files in all these different folders, each one representing a discipline by the season, by the sport type in and of itself. So let's start with the first one. Here are the results from that web page saved as a PDF file. And you can see all the names of the individuals and the rank and the nationality here again. We want this data for ourselves. And we want it in a different format. We want to segregate all these athletes. Now, one way you could try this is you could copy all the data here like this and try pasting it into an Excel program. But note that if you try this, it won't always work. So I'm pasting it here and as you can see, I'm getting a single line with all that data on it. That's no good, so let's try it again. So we'll copy it a different way, try pasting it again and well, this looks a little better. It looks a lot more like that PDF file where it's derived from, but it's all put into one column. Like I said, we want all these athlete names segregated by their own rank and time. So this won't work. What does work is PDF to Excel. Now what you do with this program is once you open it, you drag and drop a PDF file into it and it will offer you table editing features of the PDF file so that it can be exported into an Excel file. Here's a demo of what it will look like down here. So that it will at least be much more similar to the original PDF file it's derived from. And there's all these different layouts you can apply and make yourself. Let's apply a four-man bobsleigh layout that I made earlier. See how clicking these bottom output file types here will show what it's derived from. We want all pages and here you go. It looks much more similar to the PDF file that we had before. Now what we can do with Excel is we can sort this data by ascending order via rank. And we have the aligning nationalities and four athletes beside each one. We're well on our way to segregating all the athlete names into individual cells. At this point, I think it would be a good idea to demonstrate a very powerful tool that you can use in Excel called a macro. Now, there are two types of macros, and I'll create a basic one just to give you an idea of how they work. Let's try recording a macro. Now, if you click the record macro button, you give your macro a name and a description and a hotkey. Now, the idea is when you use a record macro, while it's recording, as it is now, it's recording all the keystrokes that I perform within the Excel program. So let's just try copying that set of data there and pasting it into column B, and it'll stop recording. Now what's gonna happen is every time I press that hotkey, it's gonna perform that exact same action. Kaboom, just like that. If I had a whole bunch of different 
Excel files that needed that exact same procedure conducted again and again, all I'd have to do is open up those Excel files and press the hotkey and boom, macro enabled, job is done. It will save a tremendous amount of time if you're doing the exact same repeated procedure over and over again, which we're going to do here. What we need to do is segregate all these names into different cells. We can create a macro where we ask Excel to delimit this data by slashes and commas. Macro is made and activate. Done. Now we've got all the athletes separated into individual cells within Excel and the left columns associated with them have their ranks replicated four times, their nationality replicated four times, one for each of the four men within the four-man bobsleigh event. The next task is to give all these segregated athletes their associated times. The best way I found to do this was to use another layout in PDF to Excel. So here's the PDF file. You can see the times here. We want that replicated for each of the athletes. I made a layout previously that targets that time, concentrates on it, so that now when I export this particular layout to another Excel sheet, all I have to do is sort and organize this data by ascending order, and the time should be located around here. There we go. Copy this, paste it into the worksheet we're working on now, and arrange it so that ascending order and use another macro that will replicate these times with all the athletes right now. Boom. Done. We're almost there. All we have to do now is arrange these columns in the same format for our regular database. And now all we need is to copy these and paste it into our regular database, which we can use for further analysis. Programs like Tableau allow us to conduct further analysis to answer research questions such as which favorable conditions allow teams to score the fastest times or what tracks are associated with nationality ranks. With this valuable information, we could give feedback to athletes so that they know which favorable conditions they are set up for in the Olympics or what type of team combinations they could focus on so that they could get faster times or improve their ranks. Being able to reassemble data from one database to another is very important and thus concludes this presentation.